In the mid part of the 1800s, America was being ripped apart. Political, cultural, economic, moral differences were forcing apart the North and the South. Neighbor would turn on neighbor, brother on brother. In fewer places was this more apparent than in the border states. Some states choosing not to secede, also not joining the Confederacy. Kentucky never seceded, even though there were many within its borders who felt Southern sympathies. Even within Nelson County, we had sons fighting fathers, brothers fighting brothers, neighbor against neighbor. We were a nation, a state, a county, divided. Charles Anderson Wycliffe, former governor of Kentucky, was very involved in the situation here in Bardstown and Kentucky in the early months of 1861. He was a member of the Peace Commission, which went to Washington with a hundred other representatives for both northern and southern states. And this was a last ditch effort to try to come to some proposal that all the states could live with in the situation of states being able to have slavery or not to have slavery. After three weeks of meetings, the proposal was taken to Congress, which they refused to consider. So the Peace Commission was basically a failure. He went on to serve in the Congress, and he was still a very staunch Unionist. In April of 1861, of course, the guns of war started in Sumter, Fort Sumter in Charleston, South Carolina. The first uh, bombardment actually started the reaction of the President, Abraham Lincoln, to issue a proclamation that stirred a lot of people up not just in the states that wanted, that were already succeeding, but also in those that had, were border states. When we talk about a county divided, a state divided, or a nation divided, we have to think about the fact that families were divided. And in this case, Charles Anderson Wycliffe, the very strong unionist who had served as a representative of Kentucky and postmaster general in Washington, he was a su great supporter of the Constitution and of the Union. But his youngest son, John Kreps Wycliffe, did not go along with his father's beliefs in the Union, and he would join uh, the Southern soldiers. He joined as a member, a captain, of the Nelson Grays. I don't know whether he felt like he needed to continue with this unit that he'd been leading, or whether he truly had uh, convictions that the South was right and what they were doing. But for whatever the reason, he left his family and his father with quite a uh, split and went south with the Nelson Grays when they joined the Orphan Brigade in September of 1861. In Bardstown, we had a momentous occasion because the wife of Governor William Johnson was on the Committee of Southern Women to choose a design for the Southern flag. The Confederacy flag uh, pattern after much consideration was chosen and Mrs. Johnson received a telegram telling her which one of the, the proposed uh, designs was chosen. And she sat down with her servant and they sewed up the first Confederate flag to be raised in Kentucky. And this was done at the home on the north side of Bardstown, William Johnson home in April of 1861. And they say over 5,000 people attended this, showing the southern leanings of the local people. Also in April and May, the Nelson Grays, which was the Kentucky unit of uh, military that was raised here in Nelson County, they uh, were going into camp at on Salt River. This was a annual camp that they went and they drilled, they camped out, they uh, really went through all the procedures of military life. As a group, they had not committed either North or South because they were concerned with their service to Kentucky. But after Abraham Lincoln's proclamation, there was a great division in the Nelson Grays, and many of the men left because they had Union leanings. And those that were, that were left in the group uh, went on to continue their uh, Southern sympathies by joining uh, the Confederate Army and uh, they would leave here in September of 1861 and most of them would not come back till September of 1865. St. Joseph College was a boarding school for young men. These young men came from all over the South. It was operated by the Society of Jesus, which we more commonly call Jesuits. 
And in June of 1861, there was a lot of controversy going on at the college. Many of the students wanted to go home. Now the reason for them wanting to go home was the rumors of war. Most of the students, high majority of them were from the South. Only 14 of the 260 students at St. Joseph College were from northern states. The, the students from Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, Texas, all wanted to go home. And they wanted to go home to join the units that were forming. They had had letters from home, they had seen newspaper articles, and they were afraid if they didn't go home and join, they would miss out on the war. Well, the, the Jesuits had quite a time convincing them that if they would just stay and finish out their year, which wasn't but another month of, me, of uh, classes, then they could go home. It's a normal break time. But the uh, unrest caused the Jesuits to reconsider the normal commencement time, and they moved it up two weeks. So in 1861, they moved the commencement back two weeks, graduated eight students, also gave premiums to another 80 students, and told the boys if they wanted to go home now, they could. This would turn out to be the last graduation that the Jesuits had at St. Joseph College because the upcoming war changed the life at St. Joseph College forever. Former Governor Wycliffe was on a committee here in Kentucky who were, they were corresponding with the federal government and Abraham Lincoln about arming the loyalists in Kentucky. And Lincoln uh, wrote the order to send over 20,000 rifles to Kentucky so that the Kentucky Union supporters could arm their supporters. Uh, this was going on in May and early June of 1861. Uh, those who had southern leanings, of course, knew what was going on and uh, more or less tried to position themselves to either take advantage of the fact that arms were coming to Kentucky or uh, to try to uh, be able to eliminate uh, the arming of the Union in Kentucky. Again, in Bardstown, we are on wonderful turnpikes at that time. Our roads were used for heavy travel. So anything that was going on in this part of Kentucky came through our community. So with lots of activity, lots of travel, uh, the anxiety, the anticipation, and the worry about the upcoming actions, uh, a war between father and son, brother and brother, this was going to happen, and it was going to happen soon.